All right. Praise God. Um, I'm particularly excited to have this opportunity to share on a, on a, on a topic that is very, a little bit uncomfortable for me. <laughs> and I'm talking on, um, I'll be talking on uh, blessed through benevolence. Uh, a little bit uncomfortable for me because um, I would have liked to share some examples, but it will point a lot to individuals and even myself. But I, I hope in the course of our discussion, we'll learn one or two things. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much because you are the greatest benefactor. We thank you because we have the privilege of being beneficiaries of your grace, of your blessing. I pray that this short discussion would uh, convict our hearts, would uh, cause light to enter our hearts. Because your word said, the entrance of your word giveth light. I pray, Father, that um, we'll receive light and we would obey your word. Like last speaker said, you know, obedience is the thing that actually brings about transformation. Thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Amen guys. Amen. Are there men in the house? Uh -huh. So I'm not really a very fired up, excited person physically. But I am in my heart. <laughs> you know, I'm not a very charismatic person, but um, I have the fire of God burning in my heart. Amen. And so I want to start by saying that we need to understand very importantly that when we talk about benevolence, we must realize who the benefactor is. Amen. Amen. And who is that benefactor? God, God Almighty. So, <clears throat> talking about benevolence, there are three characters. The benefactor, oh, there are three things with two characters. The benefactor and what? The beneficiary and what? In this case now, the blessing, right? <laughs> the blessing. So the benefactor is bestowing blessing or help or gift on the beneficiary. Very important. So God Almighty is the greatest benefactor. And um, in our discussion, I would like to say that this was demonstrated first um, in the book of Genesis. Let's go there. Let's go there. Okay. I like that. <laughs> so if you go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, you will see there, I would like to read because I haven't got much time, right? Yes. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Are you with me? Yeah. So we see that God was the first giver. God was the very first benefactor and what was the blessing he gave man? Eternal life. So we have to see from that point of view that when you talk about ben I mean benevolence, you have to broaden your mind to see that um, the greatest benefactor and the greatest gift that was ever given to us is what? The gift of eternal life. The breath of God that God gave Adam at that point was eternal life that he, was, that he lost. Amen? Man was created to live forever. So God is the greatest benefactor and the greatest blessing of all time will be what? Eternal life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So it is very, very important to put this in context that there is nothing that we're looking for that is outside eternal life. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the greatest gift that we can ever receive. So the greatest blessing is what? Eternal life. <laughs> Don't forget, keep in mind we're talking about blessed through benevolence, right? So, but we need to have the broader picture of it because many times we think that we're trying to be. No, we are, we are already. We're only manifesting the life that God has given us. Because if you don't understand that concept, you will be struggling. Think that you're trying to make money. Think that you're trying to be blessed. Think that, no. God has given us all that pertains to life and what? Godliness. Are you with me, please? Yeah. I'm trying to lay a very important concept here because you see, most of the time, why people struggle is because they don't even know who they are in Christ. You are a recipient 
of the greatest benevolence, which is what? Eternal life. The indwelling of the Spirit in your heart is the greatest gift that God can ever give you. Wow. If you're a student, why won't you just realize that you have the Spirit of excellence in you? Amen. Amen. You have the greatest thing that God can God, There's nothing God can give you anymore more than eternal life. Amen. Amen. So we need to understand that very well, right? That God is the greatest benefactor and the greatest gift he has given us is what? Eternal life. Wow, five minutes has gone. I can't believe that. <laughs> All right, so my first point is it is more blessed to give than to receive. Don't forget, um, our text actually is from Proverbs chapter 22, verse 9. It says, The generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. That was the text that was given to me. But to back up that text, we can also read from Acts chapter 20, verse 35, where it says, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, who said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. The only way you can be truly blessed. You know, I used to tell when I, I, I say this a lot to my brothers in Abuja, that when God has said to you, go and pray, what must you do? You go and pray. Just simple obedience. When God has said to you, give, better go and give. Don't go and pray. You will be wasting your time. You will never get the result. That's, right. That's what the Lord himself said. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into a bosom. So the problem with the church, and brothers, we need to open our eyes. The problem with the religious world, and if we're not careful, it will happen among us, is that you can be very fruitful, winning disciples, I mean, making disciples, uh, living a life of purity and all that. But if you don't understand the principle that works as far as benevolence is concerned, you will, you will miss it. You'll still be lacking physical needs. I mean, your, your physical needs will, will largely remain unmet. Because there's a principle in the word of God that works. The principle of sowing and reaping. He said it is blessed to what? To give than to receive. So, the challenge to us is that we should make up our mind to be on the given side more, right? Amen. Than on this side. At, at some point, we will have to receive benevolence. Yeah, that's a fact. At some point, in fact, all through our life, we'll continue to receive benevolence. First from the Lord, right? And from ourselves. Amen? Amen. But the challenge I'm challenging you is that don't stay on the receiving side for too long. Step out of faith. You know, you know what a sacrifice is? A sacrifice is when you deny yourself something and you're able to give that thing out. So let's, some of us have not even operated at that level very well. Some of the people that have experienced some of the greatest blessings of God are people who have been able to transit from just ordinary giving to the level of what? Making sacrifices. Making a sacrifice is that it's costing you a lot. But because of the greater good, that it's ahead of you because you want to deprive yourself and meet a need, you take that which you don't have enough or that which is the only that you have and you give to another. And we see that in the life of Abraham, isn't it? And many more people. So I want to challenge us. If you want to experience blessing this year, you must transcend from your ordinary giving, your contribution, step out of faith, and meet a particular need in the kingdom, in your neighborhood, in your family, wherever it is. Right. The Spirit of God is going to lead you this year. Amen. Amen. Most of the time, we harden our hearts and we go past needs. Right. Many of times, we are hypocritical. We know what the solution is, including me, by the way. That's why I say this is a very uncomfortable topic, including myself. Sometimes you think you have done enough, right? You should just, you know, <laughs> you, you, you just like um, score yourself a comfortable score that you've done enough, at least you're trying, but the truth is that we must grow in our giving. Amen. And um, I, I looked at my giving, my contribution, I discovered that it has not changed for about two years. <laughs> it has not changed. You know why? I feel that I'm giving enough, 
Actually, when I started giving what I started giving was not what I was supposed to be given. I was given like thrice what I was supposed to be given. Yes. By faith. And I saw God promoted to the point that it now became what I should be given. And at this point, I have even been promoted. I just got promoted. That's why I'm back to Lagos. <laughs> Amen. And I just realized I can actually give more. I can give more. <laughs> yeah. Based on my current promotion, I can actually give more. But when I started, I was given three times what I was supposed to be given. In fact, something happened to me at some point. One, one minute. I got you. Some, I've not even gone through half of my points. <laughs> so something happened, and I lost a lot of money. And I said, you know what? Let me tell the devil that this money doesn't mean anything to me. I went and cleared my whole account and gave it to the church. Yes. Cleared every cobble and gave it to the church. So what I'm saying is that there are some things you have to know in the word of God that works. Money, answer it, eh? money. Love, answer it, eh? love. Kindness, answer it, kindness. If you sow corn, you reap eh? corn. If you sow cassava, you reap eh? cassava. That's how it works. So you can be a wonderful disciple, being fruitful by living a love of purity, making disciples. But this aspect of your life, if you don't address it, you will be living from hand to mouth. So we need to, by faith, do that. Praise the Lord. Amen. My time is up, uh, but I would have loved to talk about uh, Cornelius and Tabitha in the Bible. God responded, even though Cornelius was yet to be a disciple, God responded to his act of charity. Amen. God responded to his uh, benevolence, and God answered his prayers and um, sent Peter to minister salvation to him. Amen. 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 Tabitha was raised from the dead basically because of what? The testimony of the people in her neighborhood that said she was kind to them and they prevailed on uh, Peter, right? Yeah. And Peter prayed and she came back to life. Amen.